Hi everybody, I'm Jason Klom. I'm the host of the Comedy on Vinyl podcast, and I'm listening to a comedy album a day for all of 2017. Today, on a day that I guess nothing else is happening in the news, I figured I would uh, do some interesting uh, political comedy, listen to something fun. Um, and that fun thing is this. 1968's Pat Paulson for President. I'm actually covering up the title. Um, if you don't know who Pat Paulson is, uh, was, he was a stand-up comedian, uh, an actor, performer, he was on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and, uh, in 1968, he and the Smothers Brothers launched a fictional presidential campaign. Um, for more of this, by the way, if you're just watching this on Instagram, watch the rest on comedy at youtube.com slash comedy on vinyl. Um, I first knew about Pat Paulson, I loved the Smothers Brothers as a kid, but they didn't play full seasons that you could watch as a kid. They're just select episodes. And so I totally missed out on Pat Paulson with maybe one or two exceptions. Um, I believe the one bit that I remember was him doing his comical definitions, what's a wahini, and something you put on a bahun with my hustard, which has always been a favorite joke of mine. Um, but what I never knew about was the presidential campaign until I saw the documentary Smothered, which is amazing. It's all about the censorship stuff that the Smothers Brothers had to go through. And there are a lot of clops, clops <laughs> or clips of Pat Paulson in it, um, doing his presidential stuff. And, uh, his, uh, as his presidential character, he would deal with all these kinds of different issues, um, and poorly. Um, there was just, there, uh, there's a whole arc to it that involves him denying he's going to run, and that he won't serve if he's elected, and the arc then eventually becomes he accepts it, but still admits fully that he's going to remain full of shit. That is just his whole thing. Um, it's perfect satire. Um, it can be very goofy at times, um, and uh, but that's one of the things that's so great about it. It's it's really pointing out the absurdity of politics. And uh, it has a special place in my heart because I, I didn't actually discover Pat Paulson's fake run for the presidency until right after I started my own back in 2004. Um, I've been running this fake campaign forever. It's not I. It's not as deft as put together by Pat Paulson and Mason Williams and all the other people at Smothers Brothers. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where you get a little inspired that this kind of thing went on for you know and and, and had so much great success. Um, he's just so fun. He's well, first of all, I mean, that's the face that's, that the man always kept, except for when he might occasionally crack himself up or make the character of this face smile or laugh at his own jokes half-heartedly. And it's just a delight. It, just watch it, watch it. I keep saying delight, but watching him crack up, his deadpan, not just deadpan, but he would mumble so much. Uh, if I elected, I will not uh, run, and if nominated, I will not serve. I can't do it justice, but it's just, you want to listen to everything he has to say because you know that if you do, you're going to miss something. And in fact, as I'm researching a little more about Pat, Pat Paulson that I might not have known, uh, I made the mistake of trying to research while listening to this and had to put my phone down. Um, because there's a point on here, uh, let's see, is it side two? Uh, you know what? Uh, no, no, it's, it's side one. There is, I'm going to have to find the name of it. I apologize. There are a lot of tracks on this. Um, but he just, he starts giving a speech and this speech escalates and this speech escalates into him talking about how he's going to deliver the white man's burden to, uh, third world countries because they know what to do with it. And, uh, eventually it evolves into some very angry German and what sounds like a sick heil at the end. Um, this is almost 50 years later. Um, it, 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 it's incredibly poignant. You, you should listen to it. Um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, it's oh boy. also, and I, I have actually a bumper sticker over there, which I was going to pull over, but I didn't. My buddy, uh, Taylor Jessen gave that to me. It's a bumper sticker of this stuff, Pat Paulson for president. And then, uh, also there's a book. Now uh, the, the book I have not read all of, but I can tell you, at the very least, the dedication at the beginning of this thing is kind of, uh, man, I'll, I'll just say, it's a lot darker than what you're going to hear on here. And, um, yeah, uh, it's, 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 there he is. Uh, there's my Pat Paulson for president. Um, <clears throat> an album on, hit on Mercury Records. We cannot stand Pat, which is, by the way, what it says on his logo. Um, so anyway, so I've got, uh, the, the companion book is... Very dark, um, dark to the point because here's the thing: this is stuff that that had to be subtle, 
uh, and uh, could be biting in its satire, but could not use maybe the language that they would have wanted to use. But they got to play with censorship, and that's you know it's one of those things that on TV the art form was what can we do without uh, saying everything we want to say. And then this book is a, is a very pure expression of what happens when we say what we want to say. This is a very nice distillation of political satire in as many forms as possible, down down to the form of bumper sticker. I mean, you know, it's it's simple. Of course, it's just an advertisement, but, you know, you can get it in these three different formats, sort of. But the, it's, it's, it's great to get the, the same, it's not even the same stuff, but to get this, uh, this type of political satire in two different formats. Uh, but of course, we're here to talk about the comedy album specifically. Uh, but there are uh, interstitial uh, interviews, or not interviews, but introductions by a gentleman named Ralph Story, who uh, wrote that same commentary, uh, interstitial stuff. And uh, the rest of it is either clips from the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour or a few things that sound specifically like they are staged um, uh, rallies, just so that we, they can get some audio. And that they were probably, you know, comedy shows that he put on. I don't know. I honestly realize I don't know enough about that. Um, but I know plenty about his stuff on the Smothers Brothers. This album is just so much fun to listen to it's prescient it's poignant it's it's the good it's it's the good stuff uh i really love this also if you his other album uh live at the ice house i think it's called live at the ice house it's it was recorded live at the ice house uh is also fantastic but this is just so yeah yeah it's it's stark and um uh, wonderful and honestly that that bit where he just eventually again evolves into german you don't expect that because of the lack of, lack of enthusiasm uh, that seems to come from him. That, by the way, just really does sell how biting the satire is. You listen when he's double talking, and I think that's what's so effective. It makes you want to hear the double talk, makes you want to pay attention um, because there's no flair. Uh, he's saying the things that people normally say with flair uh, with absolutely none. Pat Paulson was a genius. Um, and actually at one point I do hope to have his son uh, Monty on the show uh, we've been talking back and forth I, I do hope that happens at one point I'd like to talk with some more people involved with the Smothers Brothers and specifically with this album this is uh, it's kind of a love of mine I, I really do love uh, fake presidential campaigns going all the way back to Gracie, uh, to Gracie Allen I'm sure other people have done them that's the oldest one I know of but she wrote a whole book uh, about her fake run for the presidency. This stuff is fascinating to me, and I think it's important, and I think when it's done really well, when you can really screw with double talk and really, really make a good point, it, it's helpful. And it was guys like these that did, uh, you know, help pave the way for uh, looser censorship and help pave the way for people appreciating, you know, what the hell was happening to the country as it went down the toilet. So, uh, yeah, listen to this album. Find this album. I don't know if it's on CD. It's obviously, you can get on vinyl, and it's fantastic and fun to listen to. Um, uh, follow us on com uh, at Comedy on Vinyl. Everywhere you can follow us. If you share this, share it. Hashtag it. Uh, comedy album a day. Uh, you know what? If you want to go see my presidential campaign, uh, I'm this month, this year I'm cutting the second movie of the presidential campaign. It's called Looking Forward 2016. If you go to lookingforwardmovie.com, it's a lot of fun. Uh, throughout 2016, I released it as a series of blogs. We released 183 blogs from about 16 different main characters, and it's going to be cut together with interviews and stuff for release later this year. Um, it, of course, wrapped up when the election wrapped up, so it's kind of really weird and depressing to release the final video, uh, uh, the second to last video, where I'm legit crying on camera uh, for, uh, you know, what it, what it was. It's a little, uh, yeah, it's interesting to do it that way. And Pat Paulson was doing the same thing, you know, um, except you're not going to catch Pat Paulson crying. Um, anyway, yeah, check that out. Lookingforwardmovie.com. Go to StolenDress.com for all of our other stuff. ComedyOnVinyl.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Rate us highly. Um, and that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and also to listening to the podcast. And as always, have a good thing.